Hi guys, this is a video by Dark Link Does Math. The content in this video is geared towards 6th grade math standards. These videos are public so that my students may access this information easily, as well as anyone else looking for math help. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do not, I hope you can find what you are looking for elsewhere. There is a lot of information out there. Be aware that I am not perfect, so there may be the occasional mistake. I apologize in advance if this should happen. So today, we are going over lesson 3.2, fractions, more specifically, word problem scenarios. So our first example is a chef cooks 12 pounds of pasta each day. She uses 316 pounds of pasta for each serving. She prepares how many servings of pasta does she prepare each day? So basically, we're thinking, what do we have and what are we dividing it up into? Well, the chef has 12 pounds of pasta and they're going to divide it or cut it up into individual servings, and those serving size takes 3 16 pounds of pasta. So our problem is 12 divided by 3 16 Now, we're not actually going to divide fractions. We're going to instead multiply by the reciprocal. So this problem is going to turn into 12 times 16 thirds. So we keep that first number, then we don't divide, we change it to multiply, and then we take the reciprocal of the second number, so in other words, we flip that second number. So our problem is really going to be 12 times 16 thirds. Now we're going to look for cross-canceling um, shortcuts. So first, we're going to put the whole number over 1. Now we're going to look diagonally at 12 and 3. Do 12 and 3 have common factors? Yes, 3. 3 will go into 3 one time. 3 will go into 12 four times. So we simplify those numbers. 1 and 16 don't have any common factors besides 1. So those are going to stay the way they are. Now we're going to multiply across the top and across the bottom. 4 times 16 see, 4 times 6 is 24, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6, so 64. 1 times 1 is 1. Now we have an improper fraction here, so that means you take the top number divided by the bottom number. 64 divided by 1, that can be done in our head, 64. So we can fit 3 sixteenths inside of 12 64 times. So our question said, how many servings of pasta does she prepare each day? We're going to say she prepares 64 servings. Now for this lesson, if you're following or using the Math in Focus textbook for sixth grade, I'm going to tell you which problems that these will help with the most. So our examples 1 and 2 here, they're going to help you with numbers 1 through 5 and 7 through 9 the most. So if you're using the Math and Focus textbook for 6th grade, again, these two examples that we're doing here are going to help you with those numbers specifically. OK, our second example. A plank is four-fifths meters in length. A worker is going to cut it into some pieces, each one-tenth meter long. And we want to know how many pieces did he cut. So let's think, what do we have and what are we cutting it up into? Well, we have a board that's four-fifths meters long. We're going to divide it up or cut it up into pieces that are one-tenth of a meter long. So our problem is 4 fifths divided by 1 tenth. Again, we don't divide fractions. We multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to keep 4 fifths, and we're going to multiply it, so change the sign, by the reciprocal of 1 tenth, which is 10 over 1. So in other words, flip it. So our problem is 4 fifths times 10 over 1 now. We're going to see if we can cross cancel or simplify early on. So let's look at 5 and 10. 
Do 5 and 10 have any common factors? Yes, 5. 5 will go into 5 once. 5 will go into 10 twice. Do 4 and 1 have any common factors besides 1? No, so we're going to leave those alone. Now let's multiply across the top. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 1 is 1. This is improper, so we take top divided by bottom, 8 divided by 1. We can do that in our head, 8. So how many pieces did he cut the plank into? We're going to say he cut the plank into 8 pieces. All right, our next example. Each month, Mr. Lee spends one-third of his salary. He saves three-eighths of the remainder. So one-third of his salary he spends. He saves three-eighths of the remainder. And that's a key word, remainder. And then he divides the rest equally into college savings for his three kids. Part A, what fraction of Mr. Lee's salary goes into each college savings program? In other words, how much of his earnings is he going to divide among his three children? What fraction is he going to divide among his three children? So, if we have a lot of fractions to deal with, one recommendation is to use bar modeling. Just to see it as a picture, it makes some problems much easier than doing it or calculating it the traditional way. So let's just draw a picture of this. So here are Mr. Lee's savings. We're going to represent that with a bar. And it first says he spends one third of it. So we're going to cut it into three pieces and then state that he spends one-third of it. So one-third of salary for spending. Next says he saves one, or sorry, three-eighths of what? Of the whole thing? No, three-eighths of the remainder. So I'm going to cover up what he spent this is our remainder. How much of that remainder is he going to save? Three-eighths of it. I only have two blocks here, or units, so I'm going to recut it into eight pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, with bar modeling, what you do to one thing, you should do to everything. So I cut those into four pieces each. I'm going to go ahead and do that to this part over here. Okay, so back to our remainder. He saves three-eighths of it. So one, two, three. He saves this much. So three-eighths of the remainder for savings, his savings, not the kids' savings. All right, last part says he divides the rest equally among his three children. So there's the rest, and he's going to divide that among his three kids. Now I have one, two, three, four, five units. These are called units. We don't know how much money each unit is worth, but I know we're going to split it among three. Well, that's not easily split among three. So what are we going to do? We're going to switch over to a more traditional approach. We're going to say he's got 5 out of 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 12 total units. 5 twelfths of his earnings is to be split among his three kids. So what are we going to do? We're going to take 5 twelfths 
we're going to split it, meaning divide, among three kids. So 5 twelfths divided by 3. Now again, we don't divide fractions. We multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to keep our 5 twelfths. We're going to change the sign to times. And then we're going to flip 3 into its reciprocal. So we're going to put that over 1. We're going to flip it into its reciprocal, meaning 1 over 3. So 5 twelfths divided by 3 becomes 5 twelfths times 1 third. I cannot cross cancel because 5 and 3 don't have any common factors besides 1. Neither do 12 and 1. So we're going to multiply across the top. 5 times 1 is 5. 12 times 3 is 36. What does this mean? Well, if he takes this 5 twelfths and splits it among his three kids for their savings program, that means for each kid, he's going to spend 536 of his salary for each kid. So that's going to be our answer. What fraction goes into each college savings program? We're going to say 536 of Mr. Lee's salary goes into each college savings program. All right, part two of this question. Mr. Lee's salary is $5,400. How much money goes into each college savings program each month? Well, we already stated that 536 of his salary goes into each college savings program each month. So that's where we're going to start. Five thirty six of his salary goes into each college savings. What does the word of mean? Of means multiply. So, if I want to find 536 of his salary, we're going to be taking 536 times, what's his salary? $5,400. And that's going to tell us a specific dollar amount of how much he's going to actually put into each kid's college savings. So we're going to take 536 times 5,400. Before we start, we're going to put that over 1. Now, very large numbers. I, I don't know about you, but I do not want to take 5 times 5,400. So let's see if we can cross cancel or simplify these. So let's do some t-charts real quick. So if I look at my factors for 36, 1 and 36, 2 times 18 is 36, 3 times 12 is 36, 4 times 9 is 36, and then 6 times 6 is 36. So here are my factors for 36. Now, 5,400. We're going to ignore the zeros and just focus on 54. So what are some factors of 54? 1 times 54, 2 times 25, 26, 27, and then 3 times 10, 20, 18. So 3 times 18 is going to be 54. All right, 4 does not go into 54, 5 doesn't go into 54, 6 goes into 54 nine times. So what's the biggest number that will go into both 36 and 54? Well, 18. Now, could you divide by 2, for example? Yes. You just won't make the numbers as small as they could be. So let's divide 36 and 5400 by 18. So 18 goes into 36 two times. How many times does 18 
go into 54 three times. And I have those two zeros. So essentially, 18 goes into 5400 300 times. OK, the numbers are small enough to deal with now. 5 times 300. 5 times 3 is 15. Add the two zeros. You get 1,500. 2 times 1 is 2. It's improper, so we're going to take top divided by bottom. 1,500 divided by 2. 2 goes into 15 7 times. 2 times 7 is 14. Subtract, get 1. Bring down 0. 2 goes into 10 5 times. 2 times 5 is 10. Subtract, get 0. Bring down the last 0. 2 goes into 0 0 times. You have to write it because it's not 75. It's going to be 750. 2 times 0 is 0. Subtract, get 0. So no remainder. So 2 goes into 1,500 750 times. Now what does it mean? Well, we wanted to know how much money goes into each college savings. We knew 536 of the salary goes into each savings, so that amounts to $750. So that's going to be our answer. Let's write a nice sentence. How much money goes into each college savings program? $750 goes into each savings program each month. Now, before I continue, again, if you're using Math and Focus textbook for sixth grade, Part A is going to most help you with number 12 on the assignment. Part B is going to most help you with, again, numbers 1 through 5 and 7 through 9. It must sound like 1 through 5 and 7 through 9 involve a lot of dividing and multiplying fractions. Okay, moving on. Our next example, number four. A school district buys 96 packages of highlighters. Three-eighths of the packages go to English. The rest go to math. The math department is going to give two-thirds of each package to each math teacher working in the school district. Part A. How many packages go to the math department? So we're not going to use all of this information. We are going to use the first half. It says there are 96 packages, 3 eighths go to English, the rest go to math. That's going to help us determine how many packages go to the math department. The second part, the 2 thirds that go to each math teacher, that's going to help us with the second question that says how many math teachers will receive highlighters. So. The first part, we're going to go over two different methods on how to do this or how you could approach this. Because there are a lot of fractions, we could use bar modeling to help us. Basically draw a picture just so we can visualize it and make it easier for ourselves. So method one, first step would be to draw a bar that represents your 96 packages of highlighters. All right, it says 3 eighths go to English. So let's split it into eight sections. It doesn't quite look even. It's going to bother me. All right, that's better. And let's show that 3 eighths go to English. They don't get as many because math is more important obviously. So that means all of these go to the math, and that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 8. So 5 eighths go to math. Next, we want to find out 
how many actual packages go to the math department. This is just a fraction. This is not an actual package. So I know all of these boxes, which are called units. So this would be one unit. I know all of these units are going to add up to 96 packages. I essentially want to find out what each unit is worth so I can add them up to say how many packages go to the math department. So we're going to find a unit rate. Finding a unit rate means find out how much one unit is worth and then we'll simply multiply it by five to find out how many packages go to the math. So let's start with what I see. I see there are eight units and I know what all eight units adds up to. All eight units adds up to 96 packages. So we start with what equals what? Eight units equals 96 packages of highlighters. Now, what do I want? I always want to find one of something. So I want to know what one square or unit is worth. Now, we only use multiplication or division when dealing with unit rates. So I'm going to ask myself, how do I go from eight units to one unit using multiplication or division? Well, I would divide. Eight divided by eight is one. What you do to one side, do to the other. So I'm going to take 96 divided by eight, and I'm going to get 12 packages. So if eight units equals 96 packages, that means one unit is worth 12 packages. So this unit is worth 12, that's worth 12, that's worth 12. All of them are worth 12, even these over here. But we don't really care about English because math is more important, obviously. Okay, so next, last step. If we have 12 packages for each unit, not packager, packages, and I have one, two, three, four, five units. We're going to take 12 packages times the five units, because five eighths go to math. 12 times five is 60. 60 what? 60 packages. So that's going to be our answer. 60 packages go to the math department. So again, what did we do? We just started out with a picture so we could see that 5 eighths goes to math. Then we wanted to know what each box or unit was worth. So we know that all eight of those boxes or units adds up to 96. So we divided by eight to find out what one unit was worth, which is 12. And then basically 12 times five, 60 packages. So that's one way of going about this problem. Here's one other method. So, method two, more traditional approach. First step, it says three-eighths of the packages go to English. So, three-eighths of the packages. How many packages were there? There were 96 packages are going to go to English. Of means multiply. So we're going to take 3 eighths times 96. We're going to put it over 1, and we're going to multiply. Now before we multiply, let's cross, cancel, or simplify. 8 and 96, what will go into both? 8. 8 goes into 8 once. 96 divided by 8 is 12. You'll notice we did that over here. We did 8 divided by 8 and got 1 and 96 divided by 8 and got 12. So basically, no matter how you look at it, you're going to be dividing by 8 somewhere in this problem. It's unavoidable, no matter what method you use. Okay, continuing. 3 times 12, 36. 1 times 1 is 1. 36 divided by 1 is 36. What does this mean? Well, this was how much goes to English. 3 eighths of those 96 packages go to English. So that means 36 packages go to English. This wasn't what the question wanted. 
So that means we have another step. If 36 packages go to English, I simply need to subtract that from the total to find the rest, which go to math. So second step, we have 96 total packages. We're going to get rid of the 36 that go to English. And then that's going to tell us our remainder, which goes to math. So 96, take away 36, we get 60. 60 go to math, and we have already answered that in a sentence right over here. 60 packages go to math. So a little less work, obviously, than the picture. But there were a few things that were unavoidable that you're going to do in either method. Okay, part B. How many math teachers will receive highlighters? Well, let's see. How many packages go to the math department? 60. So we're going to start right there. 60 packages go to the math department. We're going to divide them up among all the wonderful math teachers. How many, how many packages do each math teacher get? Well, they only get two thirds of a package. I guess they're not that important. They don't get a whole package. So we're going to take 60 and divide it by two thirds. Put this over one. Okay, again, we don't divide fractions, we multiply. So let's multiply by the reciprocal. 60 times three halves, multiply by the reciprocal, keep change flip. Okay, let's see if we can cross cancel. 60 and two, two will go into both. Two goes into two once, two goes into 60, 30 times. One and three do not have any common factors besides one. So let's multiply across the top and bottom. 30 times three is 30, 60, 90. One times one is one. It's improper, so top divided by bottom, so 90 divided by one is 90. That means if I take 60 full packages and give two thirds to each, I will have enough for 90 math teachers. So that is going to be our answer. How many math teachers will receive highlighters? We're going to say 90 math teachers will receive highlighters. Having a little trouble spelling here. English is not my thing. Okay, before I continue, if you're using the Math and Focus textbook for sixth grade, this problem, primarily the bar setup, is going to help you again with number 12. So if you're having difficulty with 12, it does have some similarities. All right, continuing. Example five, Kathy has nine sticks of modeling clay. She's going to cut the sticks into thirds and she's going to share equally with some children. Each child is going to get two thirds of a stick of clay. I guess they're not important to get a whole stick of clay. They're only going to get two thirds of a stick of clay. Part A, how many children are there to all together? First of all, I'm not sure why Kathy has not been able to count how many children she has, but here we are in this situation. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're going to start with how many sticks of clay she's got. She has nine sticks of clay. She's going to divide them among the children of which she does not know how many are in her room. And each kid gets two thirds of a stick. Again, we don't, multi uh, we don't divide fractions, we multiply by reciprocal. So we're gonna take nine, multiply, the reciprocal of two-thirds is three over two. Before we multiply, let's put our whole number over one and see if we can cross cancel. Nine and two, no common factors besides one. One and three, no common factors besides one. So let's multiply. Nine times three, 27. One times two, two. It's improper. What do you do when it's improper? Top divided by bottom. So 27 divided by two, Two goes into two once. Two times one is two. Subtract, get zero, bring down seven. How many times will two go into seven? Three times. Two times three is six. Subtract, get one. So we have 13. One left over out of two. So we're going to say 
There are 13 and have children. Wait, you can't have, have a child. That would be a little messy and bloody. So remember, think reasonableness. You can't have half a child. So what would be a reasonable answer? Well, if I want to know how many children there are all together, and each kid is going to get two-thirds of a stick of clay, I only have enough for 13 kids. I don't quite have enough for 14 kids, do I? So we obviously don't have 14 kids if every child gets two-thirds of a stick. So we're going to focus on what's a reasonable answer. 13 would be a reasonable answer, especially since you can't have half a child. That, that would just be weird. So how many children are there all together? We're going to say there are 13 children. So always think, is my answer reasonable or do I need to alter it a bit? Okay, part B, what fraction of a stick of clay is left? We, this is very important because when you have children and you have clay and you have leftover clay, those children want that clay. Why she didn't divide it up equally, I have no idea. You should know this about children. They want leftovers. So let's find out how much is left. It's not as easy as just saying we have half a stick of clay left. First of all, this is not 13 and a half sticks of clay. We only have nine sticks of clay. So what does this half mean? This half means that I have enough clay for half of a kid. So where do we start? Let's think about how much we actually do have. We have enough two-third sticks for 13 kids. And then we had some left over. So we had enough two-thirds sticks for 13 kids. So what does this half mean? It means we have half of a two-thirds stick. So we have half of a two-thirds stick left. If we had a whole two-thirds stick, then I would have enough for 14 kids. So we're going to change this part into our problem. One half of means multiply. We want two-thirds of a stick of clay. So half of two-thirds is one half times two-thirds. All right, let's multiply across the top. I'm not even going to mess with cross canceling. One times two is two. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 over 6 is not simplified because 2 and 6 can both be divided by 2. If it can be divided, you must divide it. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So half of 2 thirds would be 1 third. That means we really have 1 third of a stick of clay left. And that's going to be our answer. What fraction of a stick of clay is left? one-third of a stick of clay is left. So be careful when we have things like 13 and a half, think about what that number represents. This represents children, not the actual clay. So whenever we get to this problem that says what uh, fraction of a stick of clay is left, do not just assume it's going to be that. No, that's telling us how much I have enough for a kid. We want that size, so this is really what you're going to have to do to find out your answer. Okay, now what will this help you with? If you're using Math and Focus textbook, Part A is specifically going to help you with number 6 and 10A, and Part B is going to help you specifically with number 10B. All right, our last problem, and I'll go ahead and tell you what it will help you with. Both A and B will help you with number 12. Again, if you're using the Math and Focus textbook for grade six. Okay, our problem is Lily has a part-time job. Good for her. Each month, she spends one-third of her earnings on clothes. She saves one-sixth of her earnings, 
and she spends one half of the remaining on food. Okay, a lot of fractions there. So I would recommend that we visualize it with a bar model. So what fraction does she spend on food? So let's draw it out. So here are her earnings represented by the bar and she spends one third on clothes. So let's split it into thirds and show that she spends one third on clothes. Simple enough. Next, she saves one sixth of her earnings. So one sixth of all of it, not the remaining, one sixth of her earnings. I only have three pieces, so let's change it into six pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, she saves one six. So this would be one out of six. Again, on savings. Good for her for saving up. Okay, next, she spends half of the remaining on food. So that's your remaining. She spends half of it. Well, I only have three units here. What's half of three? Well, that's not really gonna work with a picture. So I need to cut these up. So if I split them each in half, one, two, three, four, five, six, I can find half of that. That would be three units. So half of the remaining on food. So this part right here. Now, what we do to one thing, you always do to the other. So notice, for this third, it's essentially cut into four pieces. So I need to cut the rest so that they are four pieces each. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, let's answer a question. What fraction does she spend on food? Well, she spends one, two, three units out of twelve on food. That is not simplified because three and twelve can both be divided by the common factor of three. So three divided by three is one, twelve divided by three is four. That means she spends one fourth of her earnings on food. And that's going to be our answer. She spends one fourth of her earnings on food. All right, last part. She earns $540. How much does she spend on food? So we want an actual dollar amount. So let's start with what we know. We know that she spends one-fourth of earnings on food. Just so, one-fourth of earnings. Let's change that into our problem. One-fourth of means multiply. How much does she earn? She earns $540. So we're going to do one-fourth times 540 for our answer. Let's put that over 1. Okay, 4 and 540. I immediately see that they are even, so I'm just going to divide both by 2. So 2 will go into 4 twice. 2 will go into 54. 25, 26, 27 times. With that 0, it becomes 270. Now their numbers are small enough to deal with easily. 1 times 270 is 270. 2 times 1 is 1. No, 2. My bad. All right, again, 2 times 1 is 2. Let's not be confused on that. All right, improper. Top divided by bottom, so 270 divided by 2. If I had divided both by 4, I wouldn't have to do this. 2 will go into 2 once, which is 2. Subtract, get 0, bring down 7. 2 will go into 7 three times. 2 times 3 is 6. Subtract and get 1. Bring down 0. 2 will go into 10 five times. 2 times 5 is 10. Subtract, get 0. So no remainder. So our answer is 135. And we must 
write a nice sentence answering her question. How much does she spend on food each month? She spends $135 on food. I hope this has helped you with division of fractions. If it has not, I hope you can find what you're looking for elsewhere. Y'all have a good day.